8 billion people on this planet. Do you still feel special? Estimates put the total number of people to have lived over 100 billion. If you were able to count to even just 1 billion and counted one number for every second, it would take you over 30 years to finish. Providing, of course, you didn't stop to eat, sleep, or anything else. How about now? Do you still feel special now? You should. The Bible tells us in Luke that he not only knows us, but has numbered the hairs on your head. Or for some of us, at least, the hairs we used to have on our head. If you have a relationship with God, he calls us his children, his friends. He calls us justified, set free from sin and death. He names us his heirs, he calls us accepted, a saint, a new creation, holy, blameless, redeemed, forgiven, righteous, beloved, and chosen. How about now? Do you feel special now? You are chosen. Jesus chose you. That is what we're talking about today, is the fact that you were chosen before you were born. But before we do that, can we give it up for all the teenagers and kids that have been doing such an amazing job today? Man, they have practiced over and over, given their all, and we are so proud of them. Yeah, this team of kids has worked so hard. They came in last night and rehearsed. They came in early, early this morning. And, you know, a few of them, we had the opportunity in the last weeks to be able to take them on an outreach missions trip to Mississippi. And we were able to go down and serve at a kid's camp together. And, you know, it was so awesome to see them stretch and use the gifts that God had given them and just step out of their comfort zones. They loved on kids. We encouraged adults. And we got to have a lot of fun sharing the love and the hope of Jesus. With people outside of our normal circle of influence, we were able to go in and just have a blast doing that and seeing the kids worship together and have fun learning about God's word and the promises in his word and seeing our teenagers step out of their comfort zone. We asked them to do things that they weren't super comfortable with, you know, things that were new, things that, you know, were in front of people that they had never met before. And they said, you know what, if, if people will hear about Jesus, then we're gonna use the talents and gifts and, and silliness that God has given us, and we are going to do that. We are going to help reach these kids for Jesus, and we're going to have a blast doing it. And it was such an honor to be able to see them just step out in their leadership. We had lots of fun, um, lots of jokes in the car on the way down. Um, Courtney and found out that Jared isn't quiet. He is quiet ham. <laughs> So we all got to know each other a lot better. But, you know, it's so great being able to make memories and rub shoulders with other believers who have a passion for helping kids fall in love with Jesus. And, and to see them grow in their leadership and say, you know what, whatever it takes, God, use me. I'll be silly. I'll be funny. I'll stay up late. I'll get up early. I'll set up. We, it's really hot in Mississippi in the end of June. And we, you know, it, we were sweaty and hot and tired, but it was a blast because it was all worth it to see those kids fall in love with Jesus and have a blast doing it. And we just could not be more proud of this group of leaders that went with us. We are so proud of them and stepping out and just saying, here I am, God, use me. They, they stepped out and we are so proud of them. The mission that we have for kids ministry is to lead kids into a real and life-changing relationship with Jesus that's contagious. We challenged those four teenagers to do the same in Mississippi. And to tell you that they did that would be a lie. They went above and beyond to see those kids fall in love with Jesus. Uh, I can't say how proud we are of those four that decided, hey, it may be awkward, it may be strange, but I want to teach kids about Jesus. You see, not all of them have that, the talent to get on stage and talk. Not all of them have the talent to uh, be super outgoing, but they push themselves past their limitations to see kids change for Jesus. Man, we can't say that uh, enough how proud we are of them, but it made me realize something. It doesn't matter if they are babies, or if you are 90 years old, 
God is going to use you if you say yes. You see, we're talking about the fact that Jesus chose you and he chose you right where you're at. He chose you at the age that you are. He chose you before you were born. In fact, Galatians 1, 15, our power verse for day, for day, for today says, but even before I was born, God chose me and he called me by his marvelous grace. You see, before we were created, God had a plan for you and I. That doesn't change when you turn one. That doesn't change when you turn 99. That calling is still the same. It's whether you say yes to it or no. You see, when God created Adam and Eve, he did it to have a relationship with them. And yes, they messed up. They created a separation between themselves and God. They, they allowed sin to enter the world. But God didn't say, I'm done with you. Because you, you didn't listen, because you disobeyed, because you caused this separation, I'm done with you. No, God said, I love you and there has to be an answer for this. And the answer is my son who's going to die for your sins and for my sins but it leaves us with the choice to say yes to it. Yeah, we all have the opportunity to say yes to what God's calling us to do, to say yes to use the gifts and the talents and the resources that we have that God has blessed us with because every single thing that we have comes from God. And so how we choose to use those resources and steward the things that God has given us, whether it's a talent, whether it's a business, whatever it is, you can use that to reach people with the hope and love of Jesus. And so we, that's, that's what we challenge our kids with and that's what we challenge ourselves with. Anytime that we give challenges to the kids, it really challenges and stretches us as well. Because when we're going to ask them, hey, how are you, you know, stretching out of your comfort zone to be used by God? God's going to be stretching us too. And, you know, when we went on the missions trip and we were in that camp atmosphere, you know, and I love camp. I love church camp because kids get to be in God's presence with no distractions. They get to really just isolate from all the craziness of the busy schedules and really just hear from God. And as adults, we have to find time where we do that, where we set aside our busy schedules and our agendas and we hear from God. And we ask God, what do, what do you have for me? These dreams and these passions, these things that I'm good at, what do you want me to do with those? How do you want me to use that to honor you, God? How do you want me to use that to further your kingdom? Because it doesn't matter what, what area of work you're in or where you go to school, God can use you to impact the people around you. And so when kids go to camp and they have these talents and then all of a sudden they start having dreams because God is placing dreams and a purpose in their heart of what he wants them to do. And there are so many times that kids will be at camp and, you know, they, they see missionaries come and speak. And Ellie, our daughter, talks about being a missionary very often, you know, and that's just a passion that God has put in her heart to to go out and reach other people with, with the hope and love of Jesus. She wants to go. She wants to be out in the mission field. And that's just a dream that has been in her heart since she was really, really little. And you know, when, when we get alone with God and he starts placing those dreams in our hearts, we have to make sure that we steward those well. And sometimes we can get busy or we can get discouraged in comparison or, or focused on our failure and say, you know what, I don't think I'm good enough to do that dream that God placed in my heart when I was young. Or I don't think that I could do it. Well, you can't on your own, but with God, you can. And so we have to dig in deep into God's word. We have to spend time with God and get our power and our courage and our strength from God and say, how do you want me to impact the world around me? What gifts and talents have you given me that I could steward well to reach people for Jesus? What are the circles of influence that I have that others might not have that I can use to be able to tell more people about Jesus? And so we have to always make sure that we are stewarding that well. In Luke 16, 10, it says, if you are faithful in little things, 
then you will be faithful in large ones. But if you are dishonest in the little things, you won't be honest with greater responsibilities. So when God gives us these passions, these dreams, these talents, even connections, steward those well and say, how can I use this to be able to further the kingdom of God? What is the purpose that God has placed me in this situation for? And how can I use it to reach other people with the hope of Jesus? There's a parable in the Bible that talks about talents. Um, and I, I want to briefly go through it real quick. Uh, the parable goes a little bit like this. There was a master that was going on vacation. He pulled three, three of his servants aside. And, and the first one he gave five talents to. The next one he gave two talents to. And the last he gave one. And then he left for vacation. The Bible tells us that the first one went out, took the five, worked, and doubled those five, ending with 10. The next one, who had two left, worked, and cultivated, and came back with four. And the last one, the Bible tells us that he took the one, and he was so afraid of losing the one and displeasing the master that he buried and hid that talent. The master comes home and the, the one that had five originally came back and said, master, I had five, but now I have 10. And the next one came and said, you gave me two, but now I have four. And the last one, the Bible tells us that he went, he dug it out and he came back to the master and said, master, you gave me one, and I didn't lose it. I, I, I held on to it. I kept it. I kept it safe. Here you go. And the master, the Bible tells us that the master was displeased. And he threw that servant out. And he took what that servant had and gave it to the one that had 10. You see, that last one, he was given a talent and he decided to do nothing with it. He decided to hide what he had. The first two went out and showed the world everything about it, and he, they doubled it. A lot of times growing up, I heard this story, and it, and it was all about money. So if you please God and you go and work for it, you can double, and God's going to give you more. But I want to switch it up a little bit. What about the things that God has given you, the talents, the abilities that God has given you? What about those? We have the opportunity to squander and, and bury the talents that God has given us and say, I want to keep it safe. I want to hide it. I want to do nothing with it. Or we can be like the first two and take the talents that he has given us and reach the world with them and double what he originally, we could go out and share the gospel and do wonders. Now I say all of this, Courtney is a teacher and every year she goes in and she teaches, she does a great job, I think. I'm not there, so I don't know, all right? And I know nothing about teaching. She still has a job, so she's good, all right? But her mindset isn't, I wanna be a teacher. I wanna go and help kids learn. Now, she does that, but she does something else on top of that. Every year, she tells me the same thing, and I know she prays over it herself every single day, that she would be a missionary in her school. You see, her talent is teaching. She can teach really, really well, but she's doubling it and sharing the love of Jesus on top of teaching. So the question I have for you is what are you doing with your talents? Are you just going and doing it or are you using it to further the kingdom of God? You know, there are gonna be circles of people that each one of us will come into contact with that God puts people in your path. And we might not ever cross paths with those people. You are gonna be able to reach people in your circle of influence that we might not ever meet. But that's the beauty of being the body of Christ is that there are so many different directions that we can reach outside of these four walls to tell people about Jesus, to give them hope in a hopeless situation. And you know, when we get around other people, if you have joined 
joined a life group, then you have seen how God ordains relationships and connections. We'll come into post huddles and they'll say, you know, these two people didn't even know each other before group, but they had so much in common or they have a common business or they have a common hobby. And now all of a sudden they're spending time together and those, those passions mixed together, they're able to reach even more people with the hope of Jesus. They're able to connect more people to the body of Christ. And so I wanna do an illustration with you. Uh, we love candy in kids ministry. And so um, I thought what better way to do an illustration than to pull out some Skittles, right? But you know, there are lots of different kinds of Skittles. There's sour Skittles and the regular ones and the berry ones. And, and even though I might have two packages that look very similar, they're not exactly the same. And it's the same as if I went to a teacher conference. Yes, we all have the same passion of teaching, right? And we all want kids to learn and grow and feel safe when they're at school. But when we combine the gifts that we have, we like to get together as teachers. Why? Because we all have different ideas. We all have different talents. You'll have some teachers that are super techie and they can do all kinds of cool things that like, you're learning something new every time you're with them. And then other people are super creative in other ways. And so we love getting together and sharing ideas because are we all teachers? Yes. And when Willie and I had the opportunity in the fall to go to a kids pastors conference, there were tons of kids pastors there and we all did ministry a little bit different. But you know what? God gave us all a passion for reaching kids and we were able to come together and say, hey, what's something great? Like this is something that we struggle with. How do you reach kids in this? situation or how's a way that you do this better? And we were able to take our talents and mix them with other believers and say, hey, how can we come together and use our talents even greater to reach more kids for Jesus? And that's what we have to do is look at our circle of influence and get around people and say, hey, what do you have and what do I have? And how can we use that to reach more people for Jesus? Because even if I open these packages of Skittles, And even though they looked very similar on the outside, I'm gonna to try to do this without dumping a bunch in the floor. This package that I have has four red ones in it. I've Willie's package one. only has one red one in it. I got three green though. But I only have one green. So even though these Skittles look very similar on the outside, when we open them up, they're different on the inside. And so we might be around people and it's really easy if you get around people who are maybe in the same business or same profession as you to compare yourself and say, well, they're gonna be better at that than me, so I don't even need to try. But God's saying, I gave them something and I gave you something and you're each uniquely made and you have talents and passions that I gave specifically to you. So what are you gonna do with those things that I put inside of you? And how are you gonna use that to share the hope of Jesus with other people? Because God chose you. God called you. Each and every one of us have a calling on our lives. And so how are we gonna use the things that God put inside of us that's different than the person sitting next to you or the person that works next to you? How are you gonna use those things that God specifically gave to you to walk out that passion, to walk out that calling that you have on your life? Because God called you and he chose you, just like it says in Galatians. See, we started with Adam and Eve and they were in this perfect world right? They were able to walk and talk with Jesus on a daily basis. And, and, and they got to physically be there and sin separated all of that. In that moment, God's love never stopped ever. His love was still the same. Before you were born, he was madly in love with you. But it comes down to a choice. Do I accept it? or do I walk away from it? You see, you were given talents and you were given abilities and it falls down to the choice, do I use them or do I bury them? You see, it's not an accident that you were given abilities. It's not an accident that Jesus loves you. It was on purpose so that you could have a relationship with God. But so often we look at our mistakes and we say, I'm too broken. God can't use me. He definitely doesn't choose me because I'm broken. I, I've made mistakes. I'm done. I, there's nothing more I can do. But God says, I chose you. Before you were born, I knew you. 
Before you were born, I had a plan for you. Before you were born, I loved you. And I'm going to give you talents so that you can tell others how much I love them. Tonight, I'm, today, I'm gonna ask you two questions. One, have you said yes to Jesus? Have you said, I'm all in Jesus? I know that I've made mistakes and I know that, that I've done things that, that have caused a separation, but I'm ready to say yes to you. And two, are you using your talents to show the love of Jesus to others? Or are you being like the third servant that is bearing those talents and saying, please don't look at me. That's scary. I'm worried. I, I can't do this. I'm not good enough. I'm gonna ask that you bow your heads and close your eyes. And I want you to ask yourself those two questions. Have I said yes to Jesus? And am I being bold with my talents? You know, today we don't want you to walk through the doors on your way out without having the opportunity to say yes to Jesus. And so if that's you this morning, we wanna pray with you and we wanna give you the opportunity to say yes. God, I wanna have a relationship with you. And so if that's you this morning, if you'll just raise your hand right now and we're gonna pray together in this room. Thank you. I see your hand. We're gonna pray together as a family and just give it all to Jesus. Say, dear Jesus, I love you. I love you. I give you my heart. I give you my heart. Come into my life, God. Come into my life, God. Take away my sins. Take away my sins. Make me new. Make me new. Help me to live for you. Help me to live for you. To use my talents boldly. To use my talents boldly. To use my gifts for you. To use my gifts for you. To share the hope of Jesus. To share the hope of Jesus. I love you, God. I love you, God. In your name. Amen. If you made that decision today, we want you to text Life Changed to 844-MMC-NEXT. Why? Because we want to celebrate with you. The other reason, so we can be beside you as you start this journey with Jesus. Because it can be scary. It can be worrisome. It could be an unknown, but we're here to hold you up and say, you got this. You are bold. Let's give a hand to all of those who decided to be bold with their faith with Jesus.